So you went to AliExpress, searched for NEMA 17 motors, you've got an overview over all the available motors out there and you bought the motor with the highest torque. But is this the best option you could buy or are there even faster motors? This and more we will find out in this video. Hey and welcome back to my channel. I'm Matt the Printing Nerd and in this video I will give you a basic overview about good AB motors for your next V100 build. If you plan to build another printer like a Voron or a VZBot, don't worry. Everything you will learn in this video can be used to source better motors for your printer build based on the desired purpose you define for this printer. For this I will use a simulation tool from Eddie the Engineer that creates a speed torque graph from typical parameters you find in a motor datasheet. This simulation allows us to compare motors in a defined scenario and to select the motor that fits best for our printer. If you are interested in the mathematics behind this simulation, I've put a link to Eddie's fantastic video on the simulation tool where he explains how it works into the video description. I put also a link to my version of it into the video description since it contains an updated motor database with over 70 different motors and parameters in it. With that said, let's define our scenario. Our printer should print at high quality with fast speeds at a reasonable price. So I choose 24V as input voltage since 48V would raise the price by a lot. As maximum drive current we've used 0.8 Ampere for two reasons. First, the mainboard that I recommend can be passive cooled at that current and also it helps to keep the motors cool so that they don't melt the frame at longer prints. As acceleration we target 20k as maximum for our infills. The load on the y-axis will be about 500 grams, 250 for the tool head, about 200 grams for the linear rods and 50 grams for the XY joints. Let's have a look at the graph below. We need about 6.5 Newton centimeters torque to drive our gantry in the defined parameters. Not much compared to the high torque values we find in the product description of many motors. So let's insert the motor from the intro into our graph and have a look how it performs. Yeah, as you can see, we have more than twice the torque we need to move our gantry. The falloff starts at about 320 mm per second and at 440 mm the torque is not longer strong enough to move our gantry. So what's wrong about this motor? Well, it was designed to move a way heavier gantry. For example, the gantry of the Voron 2.4 starts at about 1 kg for the 240 mm version. Here the motor shines, well, kind of. Because since the Voron is based on an aluminium construction, you could drive the motor's current way higher. So with 1.5 Ampere we get a similar curve as before. And here we come to the first pitfall when it comes to sourcing motors. Because many buyers out there don't really know how to evaluate a good motor, they choose a parameter that sounds plausible to them in their perspective. A parameter that they heard before and associate speed with it, torque. It's a bit similar as with cars, where many buyers look out for the car with the highest horsepower, which says nothing about its racing ability. Sellers use their misunderstanding to target them in their marketing claims. And since torque is compared to other parameters pretty cheap to optimize, it also increases their profit by a lot. For me, buying a motor with such a curve is only an option when it comes to the price. There are motors on AliExpress for around 3 to 5 bucks and at that price point I would consider them for a V100 build, especially with a small budget. I've used such motors in my first V100 build and they were fine up to speeds of 400 mm per second, which would be enough for most people out there. But how does a good motor curve look like? Well, let's have a look at the community starling, the LDO speedies for comparison. As you can see, the torque is not as high as before, but the motor is able to hold that torque even at higher speeds. But what makes a good motor different? 
Well, here's my first tip. Don't look at torque and always look at inductance and resistance. For example, the speedies come with an inductance of 1.5 millihenry and the resistance of 1.2 ohm, which is great. In comparison, the motor in our intro had a four times bigger inductance and a two times bigger resistance. So we all should buy speedies, right? Well, it depends. For me, it's hard to recommend the speedies and don't get me wrong, they are fantastic motors, but in Germany, where I live, in most shops they sell them at about 25 bucks each. There are countries where you can buy them for around 15 bucks or even lower when they are on sale. So if you can get one for about 15 bucks, go for them. For the rest, I have a couple less popular motors that perform in a similar level that might be a bit cheaper. Starting with my favorite Levantai 48mm. For me, this is the perfect motor for the 100. Good torque at extreme high speeds for a good price. I've used them in my 3 minutes Banshee and I got them for about 12 bucks each. Yes, they are hard to get since there are not many shops out there selling them, but if you can get a pair for your build, go for them, they are really great. A good alternative are the g -pennies. Many of you won't know them since they're a pretty new brand, but I use them for my bearing testing rig and I'm pretty happy with them. The torque curve is similar to the Ventis and the LDOs and since they are sold at AliExpress with worldwide shipping, they are pretty easy to get. Now I have another misunderstanding that I hear all the time on Discord that I want to talk about. The length of the motor. Longer is always better, right? Well, turns out that's not always the case. Let's have a look at my next one. I'm not sure how to pronounce their name. Ratum? I don't know. It's another pretty unknown brand, but man, look at this torque curve. How is this possible? A 34mm motor outperforms all their bigger competitors? Unbelievable, right? No, it comes all down to another parameter I want to talk about that makes this possible. Rotor inertia. Before the motor is able to move the belt, it has to move itself. So in our scenario where we focus on a relative low current, a big portion is used to drive the motor shaft itself. This portion is for a shorter motor lower since the motor shaft weighs less compared to a longer one. The benefits of it we see in the curve. Ok Matt, now we know a handful of your favorite motors, but isn't there one missing? We've seen that video from Vaz where he introduced the superpower from LDO as new king of the hill for fast sprinting. So even if it's a bit more expensive, it's the perfect motor for the V100, right? Why it's missing? Well, let's have a look. As you can see in the graph, the motor is able to hold its torque at almost 50% higher speeds than its competitors. While this is amazing, it's a motor that needs a bit more current to work properly. In our scenario, it will be not able to move our gantry. So for a Voron or a VZBot, this is one of the fastest options and even if you plan to create a Benchy only V100 as a funny printer to break records, it's nice, but for a daily driver that is silent and reliable at high speeds, it doesn't make the cut. Speaking of motors that don't make the cut, here are a few good ones that don't provide the needed torque for our scenario, but are still worth mentioning. The Juntaike. God, I hate this name, but it's another great example for a 34mm motor. And even if it has not enough torque for the current gantry, it's a candidate I keep in the back of my head when I plan to build the next iteration of the printer. Moving the part cooling to the side of the printer would reduce the weight of the tool head by about 80 grams. Using hollow rods would reduce it by another 60 grams. 22 grams you could save when using titan screws, so it might be an option for the future. And speaking of the future, if you don't want to miss the future development of the V100 printer, consider becoming a Patreon. 
The development of version 2 has already started and my Patreons will get exclusive access for all the parts I develop as soon as they are ready to test. But back to our main topic. Every motor I've shown until now has a 1.8 degree step angle and maybe you're looking for a more precise motor with a 0.9 degree angle. Here are a couple of options I would choose. First I want to start with a motor from Motec that is often recommended as good 0.9 degree stepper. Most of you know this motor as E3D's high torque stepper. Similar to our first motor, it has way more torque than we need. It might be a valid option if you plan to do an almost silent build. A build where you enable interpolation, stealth job and use high micro steps and since all of them reduce the torque of the motor by a bit, it might be a good idea to have some headroom left for it. Speaking of almost silent builds, at the time I released this video, I'm working on a quiet version of the V100 printer. It's based on the V1.1 design, but it's sourced to be as quiet as possible. I will do a review on that build in a future video. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Another motor that I will test in this build is LDO's 0.9 degree version of the Speedy. As you can see from the curve, it's a bit faster in our scenario, but I'm not sure if the torque of the motor will be enough at a low noise setup. But surely I will test it to get some practical experience with it. And as always, I will share my results with you. A last honorable mention is Moon's 40mm motor. While not being as strong as the E3D and not being as fast as the LDO, I've read much about it and it should be very quiet. Compared to the others, it should have almost no motor whistle in standby and therefore might be a good option as well for an accurate silent build. With that said, what were the motors you've picked and maybe you could explain me why you picked them. I would like to keep the motor database updated so that new users could use it as a comparison tool. So if there are motors missing that you want to see in this database, please provide me a link to the datasheet in the comments and I will update the database. With that said, that's it for today. Hope you had a good time and now get out of here.